Thank you so much for coming to Cinema Cafe, presented in collaboration with Variety. Uh, my name is Landon Zakheim. I'm with the programming team of the festival. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to today's conversation. And of course, thank you for, for, uh, to Variety for uh, being a part of Cinema Cafe. Uh, Cinema Cafe is a longstanding tradition here at uh, Sundance. We're able to take artists uh, with work in the festival uh, and who are allied with work in the festival and bring them out to have uh, some wonderful informal conversations and talks every single day. Uh, so please check out more Cinema Cafe uh, conversations. Uh, you can always find out what's most uh, up to date on the website. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, all of our other panels, uh, the off-screen events are a real secret uh, gem of the festival. Of course, we have an incredible array of of films uh, and uh, New Frontier projects uh, and short films and indie episodics uh, at the festival. Uh, but of course, uh, this is, uh, these panels are a great chance to go deeper into um, the hearts and minds of the artists that we present here. Uh, today's conversation is uh, focused on two artists with work in the indie episodic section. The indie episodic section is our newest sec section of the festival. We've had it for a few years now uh, for independently produced pilots and television series uh, that uh, are looking to showcase um, and find futures, uh, much as we've been able to do over the years uh, with our independently produced film program. Uh, as the festival evolves and as the industry evolves, it's really important that we're able to find ways to showcase uh, new ways of artists doing storytelling. So whether or not that is uh, in the television space or in the new frontier space or any other medium that we can find, uh, we're here to support artists in whatever medium they choose. Uh, so with that said, let's please welcome uh, our panelists for today, uh, Catherine Kavari and Linus Phillips. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll pretend to shake your hand. <laughs> pretend to shake. Yeah, all right. Germs. There. It's that point in the festival. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having us. Uh, and uh, why don't you at first just uh, tell us a little bit about the projects that you're here with. Sure, mine's called Embrace. Um, it's about a, an Iranian-American medical student from Oakland, because I'm from Oakland, um, whose parents can't afford to live in America anymore and decide they're going to move back to Iran. And um, as a very codependent only child, she uh, decides that there is no way she's going to let that happen. And she starts a side hustle, which is professional hugging. And that's why it's called Embrace. Excellent. And Linus? The Ride is a short form episodic show that I wrote, directed, and acted in. Uh, it's about a guy named Wayne who's a rideshare driver. Wait, who am I talking to? I was just, I'm, I'm ready for the crowd. I've, I haven't done stand-up in a few years. I'm so eager to just... Um, anyway, yeah. Um, so I play a character, Wayne, who's a rideshare driver, and he's uh, well, like an aspiring spiritual coach, so he's just inflicting his kind of practicing his, his teaching on his passengers, and he's in a horrible relationship, too. Um, so I guess the obvious question is uh, sort of what inspired these projects? What made you want to make these? Um, so me and my writing partner Chuck, at the time we really wanted to do something that was about connection because uh, there was, it was like 2016, there was a, like the beginning of the divisiveness that was happening uh, in the country and I mean, also, there was just, we haven't really seen anything about mainstream, in, in the mainstream, about Iranian uh, American families. And, um, and I wanted to be more than just the family dynamic or the Iranian identity. I, I wanted to really, I have a lot of interesting friends, and I wanted to bring uh, my upbringing in Oakland, the fact that, to me, Oakland is a very, very unique place, and I'm very, I feel very blessed to have grown up there because I think it's like a, you know, kind of an ideal of what America could be. It's extremely diverse, but it's also more integrated than um, a lot of other cities that I've lived in. And really to bring all those elements together um, to showcase the, the world that I'm a part of. Um, and so that's kind of how Embrace came to be. And for the ride? 
Well, in real life, I was Lyft driving, and uh, like the character had just gone through a really bad breakup, um, moved back to LA. Um, yeah, and, and um, I've worked with Mark and Jay Duplass a lot, and they, they're kind of an arm of their company, a new company called DBP Donut, wanted to do a show about a Lyft driver. So Jay and I talk all the time. It's sort of like he's a mentor, buddy, therapist, and he knew how much I was struggling. So he was like, oh, we got to get Linus to do that. It'll be pathetic and funny. <laughs> Let's exploit his heartbreak. Uh, when, were you, when, when were you Lyft driving? I mean, about a month ago. I've been too busy because I've been doing post-production. Well, uh, damn you, Sundance. So um, that's <laughs> so that been down on my hours. You know, uh, <laughs> my acceptance rate is way low. No. Um, so that's after because uh, you you've been at the festival. You were here uh, some ten, years ago. Ten years with, ago um, with the film Bass Ackwards. Mm -hmm. um, the um, and that's. Uh, so, so you've been lifting. It launched my yeah. career <laughs> as a lift driver. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Anyway, we we don't have to get into why yeah. I <laughs> get into bad places. No, no. Doing horrible jobs. Of course, at, at of course. Different times in my life, but a lot of us have been there. But um, anyway, yeah. And I also had got the spiritual aspect of my character, like in real life, that was thing that w was really new and helpful to me studying Eckhart Tolle, for example, and, um, you know, but I also just think it's kind of funny. Like, you know, at a certain point, I was like so still in such the throes of my suffering and healing process, but you're clinging on to these ideas that are sort of, sort of helping you, but you haven't fully embodied them yet. And so maybe you're like talking to your friends about them too much. You know, maybe we've all met people like that. And I was aware of that, you know, also, but still doing it. Um, so I just kind of wanted to make fun of that aspect, uh, but also, you know, honor that, of course, too. Someone's trying so hard. Uh, and I, I think what's funny, I make these videos on Instagram that are sort of spiritual, but like clearly the guy's in such pain, like I'm yelling, like, be in the present moment, and I'm like crying. And, um, and I think what someone pointed out, he was like, well, those are so good because it's like him trying to be spiritual is making him be in more pain because he's comparing himself to like Ram Dass or Eckhart Tolle. And so you just have to realize, you know, everyone's journey is different. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that answered the question at all. No, it definitely does. <laughs> okay. uh, both, both, both of your projects are actually very, very much about connection and people struggling or yearning very deeply to make a human connection, uh, but while also being, but, but both of them are, are made with sort of a veneer of humor and comedy kind of at the forefront. I mean, why do you think, I mean, what do you think attracts both of you to that style or that type of, of work? Is it, does it feel a bit like it's the time we're living in? Is it something that, you know, comes from inside of you? Like, what is it about making sure that, um, that these projects are really about people who just want to connect with other people? Um, I think for me it's like working on Embrace was actually very cathartic because it, it, it gave me an opportunity to look at myself and see um, and, <laughs> and like see my codependence um, and try to work on that. Um, I think you know with the element of the hugging it, to us that was really really fascinating that that even exists that professional huggers and professional people walkers and um, there are people that will pay to be held right now. Um, so just the commodification of, of such like a simple human interaction um, that that's that that's something that's happening was fascinating to us but also like something that I really really understood because um, you know the fear of losing my parents, whether it's, you know, whether, whether they do go back or, you know, eventually they're going to die, like that was and still is something that like I'm, I grapple with because it has only been the three of us. Um, they immigrated here with nobody else, it was just them. And so, um, you know, for me it was a lot about like confronting, confronting those fears and, um, you know, through that character sort of seeing like how how am I going to deal with that later on? Um, 
I don't know that I found that answer, but but it's it's helping it's helping with just figuring it out in my own head. Yeah. The uh, so I guess something that I'm very curious about is um, why uh, essentially a pilot or a series. Why make an indie episodic with so many? What what about these particular stories made you feel that this was the right medium uh, to tell them? Well, for the ride, it's, um, you know, when you're, like, uh, rideshare driving. Sorry, I'm always trying not to say one of those companies. <laughs> so I'm, like, pausing and saying rideshare driver. But, um, you know, it just lends itself to sort of an episodic or chapter-like feel because there's just different people who get in. Um, the, the producers came to me with wanting to do a short-form episodic thing. But the idea kind of helped. Um, I was sort of worried about it. I thought it had to be like punchier and jokier. Not that it's not funny, it's very funny <laughs> for the record. Uh, but you know, it's not my sort of go-to style. It's a little more like mm, dramedy-ish, sad, awkward humor. Um, so yeah, but and, and I put the girl, a girlfriend character in it um, or someone I'm trying to get to be my girlfriend just to kind of keep it uh, just more of a through line in it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, in some ways the, the, the short form helps just pack in more things yeah. into a shorter form, which helped my writing, I think. Yeah. Um, for us, it was, so Refinery29 produced our project and um, we had decided early on that it would be a good idea to have some sort of um, like concept short uh, just because there were so many elements and we weren't sure that, you know, when we wanted to go out to sell if a script was going to be enough. And so that's how, that's how we created it. I'm, it. The original intention wasn't to send it to Sundance. I think I didn't even realize that Sundance had an indie episodic category. Yeah, it's pretty so, new. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, Either, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, when, when we did get in, it was a huge surprise for for us, so um, very happy to be here. That's actually that's that's something uh, we're talking about for sure. That so it's like so these weren't made with the intention of even having festival showcases then for for either of you. Um, no, I was just sort of really wanted to get to a new script that I had in mind, but I hadn't finished the editing on this, and I shot it 13 months ago. So around May, I did some pickups, pretty much produced on my own. I was like, hey guys, I'm doing pickups. Uh, I'm like, okay, cool, see ya. <laughs> and then I was like, I gotta just do this thing, and I showed it to some friends, and I was feeling a little more confident about it, and then I was like, okay, I know what I need to do. And then it just worked out the timing, because I did a screening for friends in early August, so. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, man, I wish I had something to submit to Sundance. And then, <laughs> yeah, I did. And then it turned out you did. Um, the, um, so, uh, can you talk a little bit more about um, your relationship with the Refinery29, actually? Because they, they do make um, a number of short films and other types of work uh, that get showcased uh, at various places. Um, I know we played uh, some short films at the festival before that Refinery29 have been involved with as well, um, and they do sort of larger uh, installation work too. Sort of, how did you first um, get in contact with them? Like, what has your collaboration with Refinery29 been like? Um, so, one of our friends, who's also an executive producer on Embrace, Kalia Neal, she had produced a couple of other shorts for Refinery. And she was like, you know, um, what you guys have, they might be interested in, so you guys should talk with them. So we, we went to, we were already in New York, we had a conversation with them. Um, you know, like, it always happens, we didn't think anything of it. And then, of course, like, two months later, they're like, well, we like your project, let's do something with it. So then that was, um, like, late 2017 into 2018. And then, and then we just started going back and forth with them, they found a director for us. Um, and they've just been like incredibly supportive and helpful and like they give good notes, which is <laughs> mind blowing because <laughs> a lot of times you get some really bad notes. Um, so they've been really, really incredible um, throughout the whole process and journey. It, it sounds like both of you actually have found sort of a group of people that can, uh, 
both give you the freedom to make what you want to make, but also be sort of um, relentlessly on you to make sure that you know you're you're sort of making something, being helpful and guiding, but uh, also kind of giving you the space you need. Can you actually talk about like how important is your relationship with your collaborators? How did you find the people uh, that you now surround yourself with? Because I think a lot of, especially emerging artists. Uh, they, one of their biggest struggles is sort of finding their people, so to speak, the folks that will really help them on their path and also be there for them, but also be honest when something isn't working. Like what, um, yeah, how did, you, how did you each sort of find the folks that are uh, closely working with you on these projects? Yeah, I mean, I think you wanna find people who, are, who know you and you can kind of talk with a, a vulnerability and an awareness uh, like you have with a best friend, but who are also great filmmakers because then they can sort of help, you know, shape it more or yeah, say something when it's not working. Um, yeah, so my friend Jocelyn Jensen, who's a great actor and is a writer, filmmaker as well, and um, she and I were just friends. We're like walking down, like walked around the reservoir a lot together. And then I was like, just she was, I would just bounce off ideas when I had them. So she came, kind of came on as a co-writer for a couple of the episodes, and you know, and was in one. So it just sort of was very organic. And then, yeah, so it was really good to have someone on set like that. But I had a lot of freedom. I mean, partly what she did so well was just like, uh, you know, I had just. Whatever, I was dating someone. Sorry, I'm just, the guy is obsessed, talks about heartbreak and women. Oh my God, okay. But anyway, and I, <laughs> I got embarrassed. But anyway, she was like, you know, I was re referencing this one person and she was like, oh, well you gotta do something about the bringing pizza over and not, not getting the order right and how there were mushrooms and she hated mushrooms. So just all those little details that you, you talk about it as friends. Um, I'm incredibly lucky because my uh, one of my best friends, again, Kalia Neal, who's, an, who's a producer, um, I've known since, we've been friends since high school. And um, when she moved to New York, I decided to move there like a few years later. And she was like, are you sure you wanna live in New York? It's a rough life. And just her saying that challenged me to move to New York. And I was like, I can do it. Um, and then when I got there, she sort of, you know, showed me what she does in terms of, you know, just getting to know people and, and um, you know, what it really takes to, to get your work out there. Um, and then her husband, Chuck Neal, who is now my writing partner, um, we, the three of us started a web series together, Famous Farah, when we were living there. And so that was when our collaboration started. Um, and then when we all moved to LA together, uh, that sort of just continued. So it really was just, we, we were all good, really good friends. And, um, and Chuck also, like he used to be a lawyer, he quit his, his, his job as a lawyer. I was in public health, I quit that. And, um, and Kalia really helped us uh, navigate and also kept us motivated. <laughs> Uh, she never let us sort of relax. She's like, if you guys want this, you guys have to keep working for it. And so um, that helped. So it's finding people who motivate you, who you also click with. Do you find festivals or other, like, uh, uh, valuable in that regard? Like, how do you know when you have found somebody that you uh, think will be, like, a longtime collaborator? I think, yeah, again, just when it feels like you're really talking to someone and, you know, neither of you uh, are too focused on the agenda of some sort of outcome, but it just feels like you just get lost in the moment of connecting, whether it's about your personal lives or ideas. Yeah, you know, it's like, well, yeah, we should do that. That would be great, you know, and you're not worried about if it doesn't happen yeah. because you're just kind of, yeah, talking as equals instead of trying to get something out of it. I don't know. For me, it's kind of just kind of hard because I, I, I have such like a good thing happening with those two that, um, I mean, I'm open, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I feel very much like I'm in a, a, a comfortable place with them. Yeah. Can you talk about um, what like wh what is your process of writing? Uh, like, how do you sort of get a routine? How do you know when you're when you, when you've got something ready to shoot? Like, what what do you do in sort of your daily routine to actually get those scripts done? So usually, like Chuck and I will get excited about something, 
and then um, and then we'll go to. I, I can't work from home. Like it'll it drives me crazy. Um, so we'll go to a cafe and we'll sit there for at least six to seven hours a day, for s however long it takes, several weeks, and um, and just write together. And we'll usually like outline it first and do a character breakdown first. Um, uh, you know, kind of just figure out the plot and the, and the story beats, and then we get to writing. But it's very, very, very collaborative. I mean, we're usually just sitting across from each other, just getting it all out. If I'm writing on my own, it takes a, a lot longer. Um, it, it's still, I, I do the same things, but it, it just takes me a lot longer. Yeah, I mean, I find you gotta just get those ideas down right away. So it's so helpful to have someone there. Like, yeah, if I'm, when I was working with Jocelyn, I'd just be like, it's just someone to kind of like force, draw it out of you. And then you like, sometimes it can be rude because if it's someone who's a, sort of just a collaborator and not like a full co-writer, I'm like, okay, okay, good. Yeah, 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 I, you, you did enough. Let me go right now. Um, but whatever, you know, I, I you try to repay that. Uh, back to them. Um, I meet with a friend of mine, Jay Davis, who made this movie, Manson Family Vacation, and he's always writing different scripts, so we meet once a week, and either we're collaborating on a script, or if he has a new idea, we'll just kind of just talk about that one, or just talk about my own script. Um, but I can't, I usually don't write that many hours in a day. And I'm of two minds about the outline Verse like writing scenes. I've I I know I could have had more scripts in the last few years if I didn't worry about cracking the full outline and you just get down more stuff. And I I teach screenwriting classes and I force people to do that, even though they don't know where it's going because you find out stuff about character and the feeling of it. You know, it's like you can't just write song lyrics without ever putting music to it. It doesn't make sense. And the medium of filmmaking is so much about the emotion. You know. So there are certain times where like scenes will pop into my head though, and then I'll I'll write because I, I I'm just like this is this has to be a scene, yeah. and we'll put that down, and then sometimes we'll build around yeah. that because once that once you see that scene over and over and over in your head, and you're like ah this has to be there, and I think you yeah you got to hold on to that scene yeah for sure yeah. And now, uh, of course, I should mention you are also, you're both performers and both the leads of your pieces as well. Um, how does what you wrote then change once you start getting it on, on its feet? <laughs> it's worse because I forgot the lines because I've been doing too many jobs. <laughs> I'm like, what are my lines? <laughs> it probably wasn't very good. I'll just make up something. And then <laughs> Jocelyn would be like, no, what you wrote was good. It's this. <laughs> uh, anyway, but I mean... Yeah, I mean, it, 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 do, it does change. And, um, you know, it's just rolling with whatever whatever happens. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I was like, oh, man, I wrote me crying again here. <laughs> Why did I do that? I'm, this is going to be really bad. OK, give me a second. Oh, shit. Um, so you do have the freedom. You do feel you have the freedom to rewrite on the fly or, or do things organically there. Yeah, less to do with my challenges as a, a director actor uh, more about I mean as a actor director you I just I hate when I can't be there for the other actors as much but also you're kind of you are there with them in a in a sometimes more intimate non nonverbal way because you're just doing the scene with them so there's drawbacks and benefits and for me I also because a lot of the stuff that we do is comedy I do like love leaving space for, for improv uh, with all the actors. Um, you get some of the best stuff doing that, so yeah. Oh, of course. Um, did you uh, start out as performers who then wanted to get into uh, writing and, and or directing, or is this sort of something you, uh, that came up simultaneously, or sort of how did you, you know, where was the first, what was the first loves, so to speak? Um, acting was my first love from like a, a young as a young kid um, and then when I started going out for the auditions uh, that's when things became really really frustrating for me because it was a lot of at the time I had a, an agent who was like oh you're Middle Eastern like these are the roles and they were always like 
it was always like a terrorist or like the wife of a terrorist or the sister of a terrorist or like, you know, a, a refugee hiding in a cave waiting for like an American soldier to come rescue her. It was like the most disheartening audition. I mean, I still went on them. I was still like, okay, I guess, I guess I'll go. Um, and I hated every, like, I hated myself. I hated my age. I just, it was a really, really bad time. And people kept saying, like, you should write, you should write. And, like, at the time I would get really angry because I'd be like, no, like, I, sh I don't have to, I shouldn't have to write. Like, I want to go into acting. I n no one ever, like, told me that, like, now I'm going to have to start writing. And I, I had never, like, done creative writing before. I had done a lot of writing for, um, like, school papers when I was at Cal. I wrote for a couple of publications when, you know, in undergrad, I, even, in, even in high school, I think I was an editor for the, for the school paper, but it was never creative writing. So I was like, oh, man, now I got to, like, be creative on paper. Like, it just, uh, I was very resistant to it at first. Um, and then, and then it was just like a couple of years of, of not getting anything that I wanted that, and I also really, really love character work. And like no one was gonna give me any kind of character stuff. I like doing accents, no one was gonna do that. So then um, that's when I wrote like a short where I played like 11 different characters, um, like having like an identity crisis around a table. And then um, I spent like several days um, putting it out there and like hitting up publications and being like, hey, I did this thing, uh, you know, put it on your platform. And so I got it to go like kind of viral. And then I spent like, I don't know, three days emailing a bunch of agents with, or managers with that short. Um, and that's when I got like representation that understood and I was like from the get, I was like, I'm not going to be a terrorist. Like that's just not happening. You see what I can do. Um, and then when they signed me, I was like, okay, cool. Like this is it. I'm, you know, I've got, I've got a manager. I don't have, and then they were like, what other ideas do you have? And I was like, ideas? Like you want more ideas? Like I gave you the idea. I did it. I don't understand what you're asking of me. Um, but I'm actually incredibly grateful because uh, writing is great and it's, uh, it, it's given me like a, a sense of power and freedom that I didn't have as, as just as, as an actor because so much of um, where you can end up as an actor is really out of, out of your hands. Um, but when you can write characters uh, for yourself and create content it, it just it just opens up a lot more for you. So I'm I'm thankful to my managers for pushing me. Excellent. Thank you. Linus? Well yeah, I've sort of always done a little bit of both. Um I've had a very weird long trajectory. I I feel like it's like I could go way longer because I'm I'm older. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I went to NYU for I studied experimental theater at and you know, um, the experimental theater wing, so you did a lot of self-scripting stuff. And, you know, like, you, it kind of teaches you to just be more of a creative person in general and less of an actor. Um, so all the directors that have had a hard time with me, blame them. Um, no, anyway, sometimes I'll have, like, too many ideas, and it's a real challenge for me to just, to just be the actor. I think it also comes from just, like, a a fear and just you have to as an actor you have to solve all the problems more emotionally and less with your head you know um, but anyway but I started doing one man shows and out of school I never auditioned I just didn't even think about it I don't know um, probably should talk about it in therapy but um, and then I did alternative comedy I kind of came up in the early 2000s watching all the great comedy in New York and it wasn't until years later I just wanted to be a filmmaker, and I just started shooting things, like documentary stuff. And I, so I made two documentaries, and then my first narrative, I was like, well, I did acting, I should just be in a thing that I'm writing. And so I acted in Bass Ackwards, and I don't know. So just, um, I don't know, I, I mean, I kind of want to make more stuff that I'm not acting in. But I think of it, we were saying earlier, I think of it just like a singer-songwriter. You're not even, assuming you're going to get anyone else. I've also done super low budget things, so it's like Bass Ackwards was me and Sean Porter, the cinematographer, just 
going out, shooting stuff, and I did all the sound for the movie. So it's like, well, there's no one else. It's just me. Yeah. Um, but I like to think of acting and writing in a very similar way. Like, I love hearing, not that I'm Jack Nicholson, but he always talks about it as starting off as a writer and being contributing and collaborating in that sort of way. Um, like, sometimes I'll just write out all the lines or write them in my own words until they are very close to what the director wanted anyway, <laughs> you know? But that sort of process is important for me. Um, when you're each wearing uh, so many hats at once, sort of how do you, um, you know, how do you know you have what you, what you need on set? For example, Linus, you, if you're writing, directing, and acting in the scene, who are you relying on for, uh, uh, to let you know you've got it? Well, just, I've edited most of the stuff that I've been in too, which is a whole other existential trip. Um, and, um, you know, you could be overly critical of yourself. I always tell, like, people, if someone asked me a few days ago what advice, because they're going to act and direct in something. I said, just, you got to, you can't be too tough on yourself. Like, you got to love yourself just like you'd be in love with one of your actors that's in it, you know? You, um, so, you know, while being, you can't be overly critical. Of course you're going to be critical of yourself. Um, but you know, the deep, if there's no one else, the DP, if there's one person that's like, you're doing it, it's like, it's like live theater, but for the crew, whether that's, you know, 20 people or a couple people. Like, so sometimes if I'm just having a horrible time and I'm like, what am I doing? Ah, oh, this, this take sucks. I, I suck. And you just see the glimmer of a smile in the shadow from the DP and you're like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> You know, I think from maybe from doing a lot of live performing, but oh, as I brought up editing, because you, you kind of have a better sense of what's working. I think actually from acting and directing so much in my own stuff, I'm doing what I know will read on camera. Sometimes I'm indicating, I've, I, and I've been taking some acting classes here and there. Um, just to remember, I don't have to do anything. They're watching. Someone else's, that's someone else's job. Yeah. So... Again, that's a, a drawback to doing it. Does that answer your question? It does. Great. Um, for uh, uh, for Kat, the when you have, because you have for Embrace, uh, you invited a director into your process. When they, when when you allow somebody into something that you are going to write and perform in, and that is very meaningful and personal to you, what is, uh, how, how, how does that sort of evolve? What is, what are some of the challenges and also merits of uh, having that kind of collaboration? Um, yeah, I don't, like, directing yourself in a project just seems so overwhelming, so um, hats off to you, because I don't know, like, it, that just it seems like a lot. <laughs> but, and again, on the ride, I had my collaborator, Jocelyn Jensen, there, and it was super helpful just to get that validation and, you know, when you're just feeling insecure, but also when there's a problem. Like, okay, yeah, that is too much. How are we going to fix that? We have to rewrite this moment. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, no, so, um, but yeah, no, so it is a very, like, intimidating m moment because you're just, you want it, that is your baby, and you want to make sure it's executed the way that you believe. And so the only thing you can really do is just, um, you know, look at their previous work, uh, see how, if it aligns, uh, you know, tonally and visually with what you're going for, and then you kind of hand over the reins and, and hope for the best. Um, so it's, it's scary, um, but, you know, you learn a lot, a lot from that, um, from that experience. To have someone with that critical mind who is also so encouraging, that you know, that it takes a real high level of social wisdom, you know, I think. And someone like, you know, Jay Duplass, when we made Manson Family t Vacation together, he wasn't the director, but he was so helpful. Like, you just see that oozing out of him. He's just like, so, like, after every take, like, and sometimes I knew it was like, or uh, I did a scene on Togetherness, and after I shot it, and I was like, I was kind of having a hard time, and he just comes up to, and I know his strategy. He's like, dude, that was so great, you know? And then he's like, okay, but here, this is what we should do. <laughs> you know, I'm like, or you know, he's saying, dude, and he's like, just laying it on thick, and I go, I know what you're doing, and it's working. <laughs> 
Okay, yes, what do you want me to do? How high should I jump? I'll do it. Um, so yeah, that trust that someone can, re yeah, that you really feel their enthusiasm, but also they're not gonna just say, great, m let's move on, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, and to that end, you know, both of you, in the midst of creating your own work, uh, you are uh, acting in, uh, in, in other projects. What do you learn uh, as creators uh, within uh, the other projects that you're working on, uh, both in terms of uh, influences and inspirations, but also maybe some lessons of what not to do? What, um, yeah, what, what, what do you observe while you're, while you're performing in other, in other people's work? I observe my own mental torment. Uh, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> no, let's just leave that there. Thank you. Good night. Tell us more about the mental torment. <laughs> no, you know, uh, for me, acting and other stuff, it's like uh, I get, you know, you. I think directors, you, you got to, and I forget this too, that they're really, they're putting themselves out there. And I had a friend he said, who's a writer, director, and he, he took an acting class recently, and he said, I, I realized how just angry I was getting. I really, but it was underneath, it was just fear because they were telling me something that wasn't helping, and I'm just gonna be out there on the stage in front of the whole acting class. I'm gonna look like an idiot, you know? And so at the heart of a lot of actors, um, you know, work is that sort of feeling. Um, but I learn a lot just by, yeah, my own, I'm just aware of my own kind of like, okay, well, I would do this, or uh, someone would do this, and okay, well, that's not my job. Um, maybe they're, I don't know, the, what, how they're doing it could be better. This is kind of exciting. You gotta just let go and try to connect in, in a more emotional way. Yeah, like I was saying. Um, so for me, I like when I was on the set of Insecure, they're, you know, they, they were very conscious about um, what their crew looked like. Uh, so how um, diverse it was. And to me, that was really um, special. Because I was like, this is if I ever get the opportunity to do that. You know, Issa was, I think, very conscious about making sure that whoever had a skill set that she knew before she got this opportunity that she was going to bring along with her. Um, and there was incredible diversity in, amongst the crew. So that was very uh, inspiring uh, to me. Um, she didn't wait to like blow up to, to then bring other people with her. It was like, as soon as she got the opportunity, she, she took it. And then the other thing is, as a low-level actor with no clout, <laughs> um, there are a lot of times where you aren't um, treated very well. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's very, I'm very conscious of that whenever I have a project because I, I know what it's like to, you know, be really excited to be on set because you're like, ooh, yay, a job. But then, but then for people just to sort of, Meh, just throw you to the sidelines or like not pay you well or you know try to get away with um, getting the most out of you for as little as possible so um, I, I'm very very conscious of that whenever I have my own projects and I have the opportunity to, to you know to pay other actors I want to make sure that they feel valued because um, no one ever asks like an editor to work for free but people ask actors to work for free all the time yeah. and I don't want to be that person if I have the means to pay the actors I'm going to pay the actors. Well, so moving aside to that, uh, how do well how does one get in a position where they can pay their actors? I mean, most of this, a lot, even a lot of the work that we show in our festival is uh, extremely independent, extremely low budget. Um, how? What advice would you have for how does one find people willing to fund or finance or raise those resources for you to do your work? Um, I, I don't I don't really know I mean we were incredibly lucky with refinery 29 uh, funding this um, and that was just we decided it was a good idea to go out to a production company first um, and have them back us before going out to, to pitch um, but 
yeah, the other stuff that I've done has been well. No, there was somewhere there was another sketch that we had done that was also paid. Um, but yeah, before that, it was it. That's the thing. Like everything that I've had where it was out of my own pocket, I usually don't have that many actors because I just feel bad yeah. about about making asking people to work for free, especially all those hours. It does seem like uh, for both of you, your projects or a lot of your projects come out of like a yearning to make something or get something out there. Um, sometimes because of frustration, sometimes just because of creative output. Um, you know, do you recommend? Uh, is that some? Do you recommend people just make their own work or go out of pocket or try to find somebody to help you? I mean, because you also are both in a situation where you have. Um, you, you do have people who um, want to support what you're doing as well. Um, so, you know, how do you get to that point where, you know, where, where is that line? You know, what kind of what makes sense uh, to how you make these, these, these yeah. projects or films or however you want to make I mean, yeah, sometimes when I'm like, oh, man, I should just made another small movie last year or this year. Um, and then sometimes Jay is like, well, you already done that. You know, you should do something bigger and um, take a bigger swing. But I also feel like, you know, most of the acting work and most of all, any opportunities I've gotten has been because I'm just making stuff. So sometimes you're just not ready to make a bigger thing. And, you know, Jay and Mark are really ambitious and God bless them and we all know what they do. And But I also see other people, you can just, maybe you, maybe you make another a smaller thing, but like, okay, maybe now I'm not in it. I learn more about directing. Um, yeah, we're not gonna shoot it that way anymore. Okay, now I'm just using one camera. And the last time I used two and it was good but frustrating. So there's, there's, all, there's like, you can have like um, so many little subtle improvements that could maybe warrant still working in a smaller way. I mean, I do recommend to people just to make stuff and spend as little as possible. I don't recommend spending a lot on short films just because I know people are gonna make something that's not as good. You, and, you know, I usually don't say that, <laughs> but, you know, you're just gonna get better and you're gonna learn more. Like the time that a stand-up comedian, like, learns, uh, the. Uh, it's just like so much quicker because you're feeling that pain immediately when some, something doesn't work. And I think that just takes longer and directors are, live in their little bubbles and they're just like, well, I wanna do it. That, that's why <laughs> I'm stuck to this idea. And so it's not until you get to a festival or you realize why no one picked it up or something. And you're like, well, maybe I should be more open or, you know. So I recommend doing small stuff. I've done it, but also I realize I you know, I was Lyft driving a month ago, so don't take my advice from me. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a huge advocate for people uh, making their own stuff, just because I wouldn't have gotten nearly as, you know, I wouldn't have not gotten to this place had I not been making my own stuff. I understand that it's extremely intimidating. Um, I don't think you should break the bank doing it. I've had a lot of, like, collaboration with just friends who were willing to come on board and we would just make something together. Um, and there are many incredibly talented people out there who um, also just want to like build their portfolio or you know be a part of something interesting. So um, yeah, especially when you're starting out, I think making your own making your own content is a really, really good idea. I mean, I did pickups for the ride. Um... And one one of them, I didn't even have a sound person, but I just like set up a boom pole, and you know, me and the DP were just doing it, and had one other actor, and it was really frustrating because I couldn't use any of my off-camera lines when we were shooting her coverage. But I was like, well, we'll just do do a couple more takes, and we got it done, and yeah. So there's way there's always ways to cut corners, you know. Never listen to a producer who's like, we need more money. Or I was talking to a DP for my last film, Rainbow Time, and he's like, man, I'd love to do this, but can you just go back and get $20,000 more? And then I just hung up and immediately called another DP. And I was like, just, you need someone who's like, yes, I can help you make this for the, the amount of money that you have. Folks who trust the project and want to be involved. Like yeah, and who know how to do it creatively. Or to be honest and be like, I bet you can do it, but I'm not that type of guy because I've come from bigger budget stuff. 
Um, you've both had the benefit of being involved uh, as actors specifically in uh, innovative and interesting television projects. Uh, what, uh, be it Insecure and Big Little Lies or Twin Peaks, uh, what, I mean, kind of, how did those experiences influence your own work? I mean, mine's quick, because I was just in one, I had one line on Twin Peaks, but I mean, he's just a it's hero. A pretty memorable scene. Thank you, yeah, that was cool. I, he was just a hero, so uh, I wanted to do it, and um, yeah, I loved David, watching The Elephant Man as a kid just changed my life, so. Um, I mean, I also got to be on Eastbound and Down, and that was so cool, working with David Gordon Green, I learned a lot from, because he's so smart, and um, like Mark and Jay, so good with working with people, but in a very different, weird way. Um, yeah, so funny and serious at the same time, and so give, give people, guys like, or directors like that, um, give so much trust over, I've noticed, you know? Um, so I don't know how it affects me making this show, but like David just says like, he just said, come with ideas. So I know my, per my performance was a, a hundred times better, you know, because it's like, you're not just like showing up on some TV show where no one cares and no one's talking to you and you just like walk out of your trailer and you go do it. He's like, he, he activates you by being like, come up with ideas, you know, and he'll use them too, so yeah. Um, I think I just like being on set so much that um, <clears throat> just being on those shows, I'm, I'm always like, I, I don't want this to ever end. And so that's enough motivation for me to, um, to just keep going, keep creating, uh, just because I'm, I'm always so happy to be on set. Um, what are your ultimate hopes or plans for uh, the projects you have here at the festival? Um, how do you hope audiences best find them? Uh, embrace and the ride. Uh, I mean, our ultimate goal <laughs> is, of course, to uh, get this uh, show made and and have it out there, whether it's on a streaming platform or um, a network somewhere. But uh, yeah, we'd like to be able to get get the show made. Yeah, we want to sell it as is. We have eight episodes that are like six to eight minutes each, and. Um, it, we we're a little bit in a no man's land still, even though there's more and more uh, platforms that are showing short form stuff. But you know, I think the kind of the the rules about how long things need to be are um, vanishing. So um, anyway, it'd be cool to do some more. I jot down ideas when I'm Lyft driving, and someone gets out, and I'll just do a voice memo right there, <laughs> and repeating this lady talking about her pilot season or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that would be good in a situation. Um, We'll see, you know, it'd be cool to do more, but um, I felt really satisfied making it, so whatever happens afterwards is, you know, just a plus.